All right, um, I haven't done this in a while. Let me get into some, oops. Let me just jump on Discord here for a second to tell these guys. But yeah, I haven't done any Blender modeling in a while, so I'm gonna get on it. Do, do, do. Okay. Um, so this was a pretty old project that I never really finished. So I'm trying to get in there and get better at, you know, completing stuff that I start. It's always a pain. So let me see. I'm going to try to mirror that. Oops. There we go. Mirroring that. I didn't want to bring the, the, uh, canopy along I want to have a asymmetrical design here so I guess I should grab all this stuff okay I think that's all of it and then I'll try to mirror this over um, with uh, the mirror pie that I've got here I hold out control to mirror only the the um, selection otherwise it mirrors the entire thing over by um, so it would you know skip this part okay so that's that um, I'm, I'm trying to get a very very like sleek flat flat look to this thing and another thing with these a lot of these race cars is or racing vehicles is the 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 platform or the outline of the vehicle will be kind of constrained to uh, a bounding volume according to the rules of the of the race so actually it doesn't make that much sense that these bulges would come out because that would take away from the like the maximum width that the vehicle could have but I don't know maybe these are just really subtle bulges here. And yeah, this this uh, matte cap shader is working really nicely. I like to use this, you know, any of these shiny matte caps for any sort of work that involves reflections, because it's really nice to check what's going on here with uh, one of these matte caps. There's even a zebra one, I think. Yep. I really wish this was a little bit higher res because it's it's kind of looks dopey sometimes, but it's okay. All right, and here I'll go back to the red. Maybe I'll turn off the shadow also. I'm not totally sure about these these uh, front triangles either. I might try to adjust these a little bit. Maybe uh, put a shear on it. I feel like they they're too it's too straight and too brutal for the rest of the vehicle. Maybe it would be something like that. Maybe this is more like a curve that comes around here. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to delete this and try to rebuild in here a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to just, if you're getting stuck with the shape, instead of wrestling with all that geometry you have there, it gets kind of complicated, so I'd rather just delete it and rebuild it. Okay, so let's see what I've got here. I could grab all of these and extrude them out. Maybe select all of this and flatten it from the front. And then say that all this stuff here can just be bridged. 
And then this one too, I'll just bridge. And just to make sure, I'll say remove doubles to make sure I'm not, I don't have any overlapping stuff here. And then from here, I have a clean base to start to play with the shape. So maybe from here, it does this kind of thing. farther back and if I put if I consider this as a as the curve then I'll get a nice soft like a round curve here hopefully well I got to turn off the sharpness here I'm turning down the crease on these guys mm, and maybe this one too let's try less crease there and yeah, we've got crease all the way down this sucker so pretty doughy right here, but it's okay. I really wish that we could crease the verts, but that is not happening yet. So that, you know, you could have the sharp corners here. Fortunately, we don't haven't got that feature yet. All right, so here, maybe this ridges out to hold this little center section. And um, you know what? I'm gonna try another method here with this with this uh, dome. So instead of trying to keep these two sides um, as you know the symmetry is, is screwing me up here because I need the fins to be symmetrical but not the, the dome. So in this case I'm just gonna copy everything here. Press P to separate it. So now I got a copy of the dome, and then here I think I can maybe, let's see, here I'll delete the dome on this side. So now I've got no dome here, and now I need to do some surgery, let's get in here, oops, okay, so This stuff right here, I want to mirror. So Shift X, and then hold Control. Shift X, holding Control. Oops. I think that did the trick. Oh, we have some overlapping here. So. Let me uh, delete this. Delete that and bridge these two together. Okay. So now this this dome is not really attached to anything, but it's it's more like just a temporary placeholder while we work because we can always merge this back in at the end. Um, but for right now, I want I want to focus on getting these symmetrical. So actually, let me just delete all this stuff here. And then I can put a live mirror on it. That way, um, whatever changes we make on one side will will happen to the other side automatically. That's pretty messed up. I don't know what's going on here. We have to add those creases back in here. And a lot of the race cars too, they're ch kind of chopped off at the back. 
Um, I guess that's an aerodynamic thing, but it definitely looks cool. It's really brutal and neat. Oops, we can get more angle on the back for more downforce there. And we could do a mirror on this one too, just to keep it nice and easy. And then, yeah, this front wing here. I'm not sure about this junk I've added in because it's sort of ruining the flow in here. And these kind of look like weapons or something. I might try to t tone that down a little bit. They look more like, this would be more like airspeed, you know, sensor or something. It shouldn't, shouldn't look like a weapon. And then maybe this, this sensor, or this camera should be more underneath so that it can see. Otherwise it's going to be blocked by that wing. And then also we can, um, Oops. And give that some sharpness. What did I do? Oh, this does not need to be sharp here. Unsharp. Unsharp. Okay, let's keep working on this. So this little armpit area is kind of tricky. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure if this should be separate, like a whole nother deal here. I can try P to separate it off to another mesh. Maybe this is the way to go. Because then I can extrude this back and that shape happen without having to worry about this side. Let's isolate this for a second. So we can work on it. But yeah, sorry about this. I mean, this is the design process, I guess, and it's a little bit annoying to watch because it's a little bit of back and forth, back and forth, and it's not very streamlined. It's not very pretty. But that's what it takes if you're sort of like designing in 3D. Which I think is pretty fun. Even if it's not the most efficient way to work. Let's see, maybe we could simplify this part a little bit. We don't need, we don't really need that much geometry to describe that shape there, it's just flat. So maybe it just needs to be simplified. Let's try with the zebra on here and see what happens. This kind of makes like two reflection pools there. It's sort of neat. Oh, and then I, with the zebra, you can definitely see little problems like that, right? So there's a crease there. Let's check what's going on here. So it looks like the problem is I've got the mirror happening after this the subdivision. So I need to move the mirror up above the subdivision. And then we got a nice smooth uh, transition in the middle. So these mat caps are pretty useful. But dang it, just need a little more resolution there. It's it's too choppy. Alright, I should probably try to figure out how to make my own and then load it in. Oh, 
Okay, let's save this one before I lose it. I'll delete that. This, go to border, sharpen up the border. Okay, something like that, I think. Maybe this should be sharper here. Should I separate this? Maybe I'll separate this one too, because it's kind of getting hard to select stuff here. Basically, whenever I run into trouble selecting things, I'll, I like to separate, just so it's, you know, easier. I might have to come back to this soon. This is, this is kind of awkward. I could try to flatten all this. Man, it is tough to select. Flatten on the top. Okay. okay. Hello, Peter. Hello, Miss Stolo. Hi Dustin, A0 Alpha, welcome, welcome. Hey Fabian, Ice String Fairy, everywhere, hello. Um, yeah, so here we are, just trying to get this thing working properly. I mean, it's another one of those um, started but never finished projects. I have like millions of these, and I don't know about you guys, but I get anxious trying to finish stuff. Um, I don't know. I think in the beginning is is easier because I feel like I'm, you know, really excited about the project and and there's not really much pressure. But then somewhere in the middle, it becomes like, oh, I've already sank a lot of time into this thing, and um, I'm not sure if it's good or not. So I'm just gonna wait a little while and see, let it marinate, but it's probably not not smart. Mm. Alright, so maybe this doesn't need to be all. Oh, there's two there. What the hell? That's not good. Oh boy. I had a lot of doubles there. Oh boy. Okay, so when this happens, when you got like doubles or you made a mistake somewhere down the line and you got all these errors happening, sometimes it's easier to just go pick everything. You can do Control Shift D, remove doubles. And then here it says removed four verts. So I had a couple errors in there. Adding another loop here to keep that sharper. You have to bevel that. Uh, 
Hello, game dev Fred. We don't make a copy of this. There we go. Easy. So we're, u we're using a shrink wrap modifier here to get this to stick on. of this maybe we can try a different color here toxic green that's kind of neat I think this works better than the the previous um triangles I had here that were a little too brutal for the rest of the design. This one feels a little more organic and more, I guess, swoopy, which I would, I would consider this whole, all these surfaces to be swoopy <laughs> in general. Um, we have a slight Okay, I'm gonna get rid of some of these. I think it's a little bit overkill here. We could technically get this this dome to like paste itself, I think. Here. What if we go order? Delete it, and then again border. Extrude this out a little bit. So now we have a little flange here, and then maybe the flange. Let's tell the flange to get stuck onto the. Get stuck. Let's see, where is it? Shrink wrap. Okay, the flange. We need to put it onto a vertex group. I should probably call this the canopy and okay then the shrink wrap target is the body let me rename this to body body okay this goes on to body but we want to use that vertex group and we want to project on the axis there we are. Easy. It's kind of tough to see that green, maybe. Alright, let's try. slot, give this the glass, GLS, okay, roughness, all right, I'm going to copy this edge here, hit P to separate it, and then F to fill it, and we can use this as just a temporary little filler here. Let me remove these slots and just make a new, or maybe this will work, glossy gray. Why is this still see-through? What, oh, that's why. There we go. So 
I want that to just be like a little temporary blocker and here, I'll make a new material here, remove that slot and let's just make this black. Maybe the glass can also be a little bit darker so, so we don't see too much inside there. And while we're at it, let's put in a light. This will be an area light, rectangle. Where'd it go? Oh. There we are. Here's our light. different colors here. <laughs> okay. This is looking better than this morning. Um, recovered from hauling rays. Yeah, totally recovered reco from hauling rays, but um, I went over to Kirk's house yesterday and they had a little spicy ramen dinner actually we we had the uh, 2x spicy ramen Korean um, let me see if I can find it spicy noodles Korean two times um, we had this one so uh, had to uh, take a little visit to my my office this morning and take care of some business, if you know what I mean. Some pressing business. But I th uh, I might be back there. I might be having to head over to the office again later today. We'll see. It's halal certified. Pretty good stuff. And we also got, or Kirk got some uh, spices, um, some hot sauce from hedonist. I think he got the, what is it called? The Hot Ones Hot Sauce Package. Something like that. Oh, he didn't get the whole, holy sh... That's very expensive. He got a mini pack. Um, but that's, that's more expensive than I thought it would be. Okay. Cool. Um... Hey Jesse, how are you doing? Um, ba -do -ba -do, let's see. Kalina, hello Kalina. Hey Julio. Um, Fabian says, are those decals loaded in as font or SVG? So these were just straight up geometry. Like these are all modeled. Like the way you model this is you, you say like, oh, I want to end. Okay, I'll just can connect these two here you could you know inset these it wasn't exactly like this but it was something like that I forget how I did it and then you just bevel the corners That's how that, those were modeled. Let me try that again. How did I do that? Maybe it was just like very simply just knife tool? Was it? I don't know. Something like that. Um, this is a. Uh, I'm using heavy poly config, which is a 
just my own scripts for this stuff. Maybe this front edge needs to dip down a little bit. Something like that. Do I plan on selling it? Uh, no, it's free. You can get it for free. It is um, just search heavy poly config install 2.8 on YouTube and you'll see it. It is free. Why don't you send your config to the Blender devs and maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've uh, sent in some like suggestions and stuff to the to the dev Blender devs forum and stuff and yeah, I've tried. But um, it's it's a pretty busy space right now. Like a lot of people are suggesting a lot of things, and the developers have a lot of work to do al already on their plate. So. Um, for now, this is just, I mean, I just kind of puts along on my, on my own here. But there's been a lot of nice things, a, a lot of nice uh, UI improvements in 2.8. Anyway, so it's cool to be able to play with those. What am I doing? So I guess I want sort of a Y shape here. But the, oh, see, this reflection is kind of ugly right here. That, you know, this should probably go straight through. Um, you can see it here too. It's like wobbly right there. So how can we make that better? Probably need to add in knife cut. There we go. So that's straightened that out a little bit. Man, we really need sharpness on the decrease on the corners there. as good as it's gonna get, I guess. Okay, and then all three of these maybe can go down. Here, how about this? Put a middle edge here and then one down here so that we can sort of match what's already happening. Get some roundness to it. is also pretty nasty over here so maybe I should redo that
Okay, maybe the solidify has to go all the way at the beginning. I don't know what I'm doing. Never mind. Cancel that. Um, Dream High says, is the cargo spaceship tutorial teach you great workflow for clean poly, poly modeling? Um, I mean, I think so. I think it's good. Maybe, I don't know. So a couple people have been doing it so far, but here, how about I just show you what it looks like? I'll just show you the model and you can judge for yourself what you think. Uh, where is it? Oh my God, my brain. All right, so this is the the final model from the uh, from the tutorial, and it's loading in a little bit. The textures are still loading in. Yeah, and somebody in today's Blender today stream was saying that procedural textures don't work in Eevee, but they do. We have procedural textures in here, like for this um, dirt shader here. This is all procedural, and some of the you know noise and this stuff in here is all procedural. So I don't know what they're talking about. It works in Eevee, and that's it. Let me see where the. Let me see if I can find the wireframe here for you guys. So that's the wireframe. I don't know, it looks clean to me. Oh yeah, we got random wireframes since then. This is new. Very nice. So yeah, there's the wires. Oh no, it does. This is the random color setting on. Whoa, crazy. Whoa. Kind of cool. All right, let me go back to what we were working on. I hope I saved that properly. Did I save it? Yeah. The random wireframes are up here. You just say shading and then random, and that's it. Shading, random. Solidify and um, yeah, and in those tutorials, I go way, 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 way slower than what you see here. I'm this is just like I'm just kind of modeling for myself here, so I'm not really explaining anything. But in the videos, I try to go really step by step and cover everything. I think that's a little bit better. Um, let's just take this in here. Maybe these are, what are these sections for over here? Maybe that's good for sensors.
this is a bug, I think, for subdivision. Because when we're trying to select a face here, and um, let's say we're in, whatchamacallit, see-through mode here. When I try to select a face in subdivision, the, it subdivides the face dots, which is not what I want. I only want one face dot, like over here, right? Not a million of them, because then it makes it impossible to uh, make that selection. Like, what it should be doing is using these face dots here, so that I don't accidentally select these faces. But I think that's a bug. I've seen that, like, popping in and out with different builds of Blender, and hopefully that will go back to normal soon. But yeah, it keeps. That's driving me crazy. I can't select faces in, with subdivision turned on. I guess the only way would be to do this. Turn it off here, but still, that's not ideal. <laughs> like, it shouldn't be subdividing the face dots, I think. Yeah, I need to report that. What else do we need here? With the sensors, would it make sense for sensors to be over there in the corners? Or is that just cooling, or what is that? It's almost impossible to select. Try to put a light in there. Or maybe back here. Sometimes this overlapping here, like when this face gets crazy, it's just because there's too many polygons here and it's stretching out so you can just draw a knife here and that'll calm it down or you could like draw a knife here that should calm it down is there a symmetry option now yeah, there's symmetry. We've there's symmetry for sure. Oh, let's see. Maybe this. I'm gonna try metallic paint on this. needs more space up here. I 
And again, this, this area here is freaking out, so we could probably just draw a knife from here to here. Or maybe we could bridge from here to here and then fill this area. That should be more relaxed. get rid of a couple of these because they're just complicating things. And that that's weird. What's going on here? Oh, okay, there's two. There's extra lines in here, which is causing that pinch. I just gotta delete that one. So yeah, simpler is better here. I like to remove stuff. I feel like there's too much going on in here. I'm gonna try to simplify a little bit. And that way we can make big gradual changes without having too much trouble. Even this is kind of awkward here. So maybe this um, would make more sense to just go across. Like that. And then around here. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, and then I still have to deal with this. Um, creasing that I did. Undo the center crease. Maybe undo these two. And redo this one. Something like that. Let's make a little carbon fiber here, texture. So I wonder if we could do it with a text uh, checker. I wonder. Higher scale, and then this is um, a little bit inconsistent. So I'm going to change the, I guess the layout of the checker with. I think it's Control T. Is it Control T? Yeah. Okay. You select the checker, and then you say Control T, and then we can switch this from generated to object here, like that. And that should hopefully make it a little more even. And then 
Eh. It's not exactly even though. Maybe. Yeah, it's making. Why is it making all these? I guess it's the angle of this thing is causing it to have those those little stripes. But what if I rotate this? Eh. Okay, it's not perfect, but I think it's okay for now. I'm going to skip UV. I mean, UV would be good, actually. UV would be good, but I'm going to skip it because I want to use this texture for other things too. And I want it to just be like plug and play. But, eh. Okay, whatever. Good enough. Good enough for now. So here's our checker. And then uh, we can plug this into... Let's try just roughness just for now, just to see what it does. Okay, that's like some approximation of carbon fiber. There's rotation. Let's see what rotation does. Well, actually, I don't think this will work because we don't have anisotropic yet. This is actually what, what you need for really realistic looking carbon fiber, but this will like stretch out the reflections in, in a direction. But and, and that works really well with carbon fiber because the fibers actually stretch out reflections lengthwise. But in this case, um, I think we could try to mimic that with uh, normals maybe um, let's see bump I'll try to put the bump into here and use this noise texture as a as a bump okay so here's our noise it's just going everywhere right now you make it really really high and then also the same thing, I'm going to go control T on it to make it um, give us these uh, scaling options. And then let's make it really, really thin. So I want a bunch of lines like that. So it looks like fiber here. Okay, so that's looking good. Oops. Okay, we got fibers going this way. Now I need fibers going the other way too. So we, we have them going front to back and we need them going side to side also. So that case, for that case, we're gonna, um, I think reuse this one. And uh, reuse all this crap here. Here, actually we're gonna use object. Okay, yeah, we got the fibers going. I don't know if you guys can see that on the stream. It might be compressed out of out of the way, but okay. So let's see. So this version of the noise should be going left and right. So let me try this one and see. Maybe we can we can just copy the scale here, and put this one over here, and make this one one. Okay. There we go. So now we got the scales working. Or oh, it's fine. Okay, I think it's fine. Okay, so now we need to switch between these two materials. So I want to switch between them using this checker material. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's leave that off. Okay, so now the, the noise is happening everywhere, but in this case, I want to search for a mix RGB, I think. And this one will go here. 
Oh, actually, no, this comes before. This one will go here. This one will go here. And then what should happen is we should be able to switch between the two different directions. So right now, both of them are happening at the same time. But we should be able to switch to one direction and then the other direction just by changing this mix shader like that. And so now we can do the, the, the checker. So let's make this down to black. So now it's going to switch between these two di directions based off of the checker that we made earlier. Hopefully. Let's see. And I hope it doesn't crash. Okay, good. There it is. We got a weave, weave pattern. Um, yeah, that's looking decent, I think. Uh, let's see. Strength. It's weird how this doesn't seem to do anything. Alright, I guess this is not no longer having any effect. Um, we should be able to... Hmm. Let's add in a clear coat. There's the clear coat. But it still doesn't look right, I think, because um, the the direction the directionality is not right. Let me see, what if we make this higher? Starting to show up there a little bit. Oh, oops, I had this in the wrong section right there. That's why. Okay, I think this will work. Let's try point one. There we go. That's looking closer. We're getting that um, anisotropic highlight going through there. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I think we're in the realm. Now it's just tweaking a little bit. If you got two, you know, copies of the same material and you want to change them both, sometimes it's cumbersome to, you know, go into both of them and adjust them over and over. So you could add a value and just plug that value into both of these. There we go. And it is really, really, really shiny. Maybe this needs to go down. Well, it's not perfect, but if you keep tweaking the settings in here, it should come up with something cool.
All right, <laughs> I think I've kind of bored everybody to death here. But anyway, I'm probably going to keep working on this um, in the future. Thanks for joining in, guys. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. But I think you also need anisotropy. I do need anisotropy, but I, I mean, we don't have that in Eevee yet, as far as I know. I mean, unless there's something I'm missing. Because if, if we have some roughness, anisotropic, it doesn't seem to do anything. It should be stretching out the reflections, but it's not really doing anything. So... I don't know. Maybe I'm missing a. Maybe there's a hack to get it work working in Eevee, but that would be nice. That would be nice. What happens if I go in here too? Alright, I need to give this some more time, but anyway. Cool, thanks for joining in guys. I will uh, see you next time. Happy blending.